Squeegee and Ink podcast, episode 19, with Darren from Squeezed Orange. Hi Darren, how are you? How's your day been? What have you been up to today? Oh, yeah, been all right, manic. Um, I've been printing hoodies all day. Oh yeah. Evergreen That's... hoodies, yeah, four colour back, sleeve. Inside nape, front, Oof. literally all day on them. So yeah, you seem to get quite them. high end stuff though, don't you? Like they're not, you're not like you don't seem to be working on anything mediocre. Like if I can take your Instagram as a literal, <laughs> no, um, <laughs> yeah, that's just the way I pushed it. I think I've mm. always, um, I don't know. I say push for the higher end stuff. If you like, I mean, a print like you know, we're still. I don't, I don't think our prints are any better than anyone else's. But it's just maybe the way we dress it up. Everything's folded in a bag, nape print, mm. um, purely because that's what like our core customers need. Mm. Um, so a lot of the customers we we are they they are retail brands. So a few of them have stores or they're going to shows and festivals and things like that. Um, so yeah, they sort of need the full service. Brilliant. Uh, which is good. So yeah, it's kind of all built into the price. So we do get a lot of click through and see the price list, and then they're like, "Wow!" So <laughs> we're not we're not the cheapest, but again, we're not the most expensive. We're not we you know we're not crazy expensive, but we charge you know everything's included: the night prints, the fold in the bagging. It's just all in the price, so we haven't got mm. to keep going through it with everyone. That's really good. Um, yeah. yeah. So that's it. So when it leaves our shop, it's done. That's mm. it, fully, fully done. Um, so like, what, when you say like we, like what's your like team looking like? How many people have you got? So like, there is here? now four of us. Oh, so, yeah. yeah, yeah, there's me. Um, and then there's three of us. got Steve on the embroidery um, and then Georgia. And then I've actually got my dad in there as well. He's oh, come cool. in. He started last, uh, yeah, about last week he started. Nice. So yeah, he's he's come in and now he's, putting in all the nape prints for us because a lot of that stuff's like the transfer stuff so yeah we're transferring the nape so he sort of handles all of that for us which is good brilliant um, yeah. yeah you can get a lot done with four people that's yeah especially when you like give them and train them in proper tasks and stuff so yeah you've got like yeah. two baradons is that right on the embroidery side third on the way yeah literally yeah yeah so uh, I'm chatting with them now so yeah the third one should be in Hopefully, like, <laughs> like, like we need it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, yeah, we'll be running three baritons. Um, last year we had five brother PR six fifty machines. Mm. So I made the jump. Like that's sort of like what we started with. Is that a single head um, or something, or why would that? Why would you need more brothers to baritons? So it, it was just a route I went down many, many, many years ago. We're sort of going back 10, 12 years, maybe, um, when I was sort of like first getting into it and everything. And I, I thought, oh, I'll pick up an embroidery machine and blah, blah, blah. Um, I ended up sort of on eBay, as everyone does, and then bought the Bravo PR machine, mainly because cost of entry was the cheapest machine, mm. one to learn on, etc. And then as it grew over the years, I then bought a second one in case if one broke down. And then a third mm. one as we got busier. And then one day you end up with like six of them, I think I had yeah. uh, in total. And then last year I was like, okay, we need to start switching. I was out, it was last year I started looking at autos uh, and switching the embroidery to like the real industrial stuff. Mm. And then that's when we made the decision to to go Baradon. So yeah. they 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 helped us out, and then gradually sold off all the brother machines, which <laughs> went surprisingly quickly. It was a good time to do it because um, it was like middle of lockdown, etc., and none of the stores selling the the brother machines either had any stock or were selling and operating. And then loads of new businesses cropping up, I suppose. So exactly, yeah. So we just listed them on Facebook Marketplace and they were gone maybe within a month. We sold five machines in a month. <laughs> um, and then, yeah, straight from that, it was like first barrel in, second barrel in, and now uh, we're on to the third. So Yeah. I've always like kind of wondered what it, like how many machines one operator can do. 
because like if you've got enough hoops and setups and jigs yeah then it's just like constantly loading like yeah there must be a sweet spot but then it's quite hard to say that because sometimes it might just be loads of le little left chests and then you're like mm -hmm. hooping most of the time so yeah, yeah it's quite it's quite tricky to know like, what the perfect ratio from skilled person to how many machines they can do is okay. it de it depends on yeah, i suppose on the operator really um like i mean i say steve's my embroidery embroidery guy he can just sort of get into a flow and he's framing like you know there's two on the machine framing two cleaning the other two that have come off and it's sort of just a constant constant mm. revolution Mm. Um, but then you're right. We got into we done these jackets the other that I say it's probably a week, other month more like, and it was a huge thirty. I had to go and buy bigger frames. Yeah, and the was, run. The, was it the big jackets with squeezed orange and black? That one? No, that was that was one that I'd done just as a as a show off piece. Oh, it was like look yeah. what we can do. And then someone went and you know yeah. the client went, yeah, I want that. Yeah, so I was like right, okay, so. We, <laughs> We, we priced it all up and done it. Like we, we had to run like an MOQ of like 15 or something we were doing, but the run time was like three and a half hours per jacket. Yeah. It took us two weeks yeah. in so amongst what's, what's, other jobs. What's your embroidery guy doing? Is he, is, he, is he skilled up in other areas where he can not just be staring at the embroidery? Yeah, machine? So, he, yeah, yeah. so he, could, yeah, he pretty much is like the right-hand man, if I'm honest. Um, so yeah, it's like me and him churn through most of the stuff and then we've sort of got the others that are, that are around us sort of like picking up doing the labeling folding bagging etc etc so yeah me and steve pretty much smash for it all i still do all the screen print there's no other screen print so it's still me mm. only me doing the screen print and i've kind of just got people I'm, I'm trying to get it so we're not there yet i'm trying to get it so everyone else like covers i literally don't have to touch the embroidery or anything else and then i can just screen print all that yeah. That would be nice, but it never <laughs> it never happens, does it? You know, it's sort of owner operator or whatever, and it's you're constantly pulled away from the press for emails, for phone calls, for just yeah, it all quickly gets on top of you. I know, I know. So, like, what kind of setup uh, inquiries and stuff have you got for your screen printing, or do you prefer to use? Because, like, if you are pulled away, you can't just be pulled away from like difficult like operating inks can you so like you can't be pulled yeah. away from water base and discharge and stuff so yeah yeah no so we are uh plaster cell only yeah. i've only ever really used plaster cell i was actually mm. um i chatted to a few guys on instagram um things like downcast apparel he was on there the other the other yeah. week i chatted to him about water base literally this morning i was like i'd love to get into it but it, you know when it just doesn't suit the shop it doesn't suit my style of print you know i've left screens on the press now to to go back tomorrow and we're going to pick up that job you know and I, i've got into the habit of doing that and i know you mm. can't do that water base i'm not tearing the press down and then reset tomorrow yeah. etc so no but we use union inks mix opaque um mm. so we're pantone mixing on that system mm. um on like the on the ims 3.0 whatever it is um app uh, we've always used that. I know there's like wheel flex and things about, but I've always used Union. I literally was like what I got started on. I think I ended up with like a sample pot of it once when I first bought, you know, and I just stayed with it. Um, and it seems to be, it seems to be good stuff. We've never had, never had any issues with it. I do like the white. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, he, he yeah. your inks and they pull nice. That's it. That's all I say. It's just like, Everything we do, like we, I'll heat the inks, heat the palettes, and you just go through it. People always ask, "Oh, how do you print so smooth? Is it water base? Is it this? And have you done this base and that or whatever?" No, it's just heat the inks. No, that's that's there's no trick. Please to it. heat I've the inks. The I want to know what yeah. you do to the inks. Are you putting them like? How are you heating these inks? So you just no, stirring the, the shit out of them, or <laughs> basically with the white? Yeah, we've got um one of them big like drill bits that goes in the white, and we literally drill mix it. Uh, to, like I'll go in that's one of the first jobs of the day go in turn everything on mix the ink and I often just stand it underneath the flash so I then just slide it underneath the flash um, it's obviously not too close mm. um, that it's curing in, in, in the bucket but yeah it just gets it nice and warm when you come to print and then any other colours that we're using that day if it's like a real cold day like winter I'll fill up a 
a bucket with like a kettle water and actually stand them in it. Like wow. we like really heat them up. So they're, they're, they're almost like water based by the time we get to them. Um, mm. And then, yeah, they're, they're super sort of easy to pull. Yeah, you know, it we've, definitely we're, we're shows pulling, your end result. Yeah. It's, it's crazy. So we're pulling, I mean, we're trying to stick with 55 for a base if I can, just because it's nice on the wrists. But mm. if there's any um, fine detail, like tomorrow I'm, I'm doing a nice print, which is like full, full half tones, like the whole thing, a nice like sim process thing. Uh, we're like running a basis on like 70, 70s, which right. is all right, but pulling white plastisol through for a base is, you got, you got to heat that up. Yeah, you've sure got some warm. like abs. <laughs> you got, you got <laughs> yeah, something, basically, you got yeah. like some freaky ass, incredible core yeah. going on that yeah is not used for any other thing apart from putting yeah, white through a yeah. 77 and then like putting your top colors on like over the 77 for simulated process do you do you go to like as high as 90 or where do you go 90s yes. yeah usually yeah. like 77s and 90s and then we'll even top white the 90 mm. as well with the 90 mm. we tend to top white one above what we base i don't know whether right. that's like what what sort of, I don't know whether that's like industry standard or whether that's do, but that's just something that we've we've done. I'm sure I've heard it somewhere. Mm. Um, so yeah, if normally if we're basing on a 55, we're highlight white on a 77 or something like that, or a 61. Mm. Um, yeah, we always tend to step that up. It just gives us a real nice, completely yeah. smooth um, white, which and is then which have is what you ever want. Have you found, because like, when I was teaching and stuff a lot more, like in mm -hmm. person, people were like getting, uh, they were they were coming to us with like problem solving things like fibrillation and stuff. And we yeah. were just, most of that I feel is down to the quality of the shirt. And it's actually very rarely that you're heating up so much that the fibers are coming up. It's mostly yeah. that the fibers are shit to begin with. But yeah. do, you, do, you, can, do you like fight against fibrillation at all or? Do you do any pressing afterwards to make it even smoother? I've heard that people do so, that. Some, yeah, so sometimes we will heat press after. If we've done mm -hmm. a run of hoodies and, there, and I look at them and go, oh, wait a minute, we, we can heat press after if we know they're going like high-end retail. If we've used like, like Rue Porters or something like that where they're like just the blank garment alone is like £45 for the blank hoodie. Mm -hmm. um, and they're going to be retailing these maybe over £100 we're going to make sure that that is fully butter smooth print on there mm -hmm. um so yeah we would heat press in that situation other times um if it's i say like a standard job and we're using either like stanley stella or build your brand they're mainly our two go-tos yeah. don't really ever have any fibrillation problems on their garments um yeah, so we don't tend to. We yeah, we just use we just use them black garments. They're nice. Yeah. They're real nice to print on. Um, point where we will turn away. I won't print on. I sound like a right snob, but I, I won't print on a Gildan or anything. I like won't that. print you on know, a Gildan. You're yeah, like you're like you my go. print my print um, doppelganger. I yeah, literally, literally just won't do it. It's not coming in. Um, the reason being for me is because I've I've had it before where. Where we are quite heavy on Instagram and we post a lot and we do a lot of the close ups and we're like basically like going, look at this, what we're doing. You know, we're posting close ups of the work. And then you email us and you go, hi, yeah, can we bring on some Gildans, this, that, and you do it. They just straight compare it. Like, this doesn't look like your Instagram. And you're like, yeah, you're right. But it's the garment. But I promise yeah. you, it's the garment. It's not us. Um, yeah. So, yeah, we've done that. And I think that was like a pretty much a true story of what happened um and then from that i was like no never again not if they're just going to compare so yeah we just turn them away unfortunately mm. they're not not for us yeah well one time i had to do they were like advent and i just wasn't at the stage where i knew that i could say no <laughs> and mm. then i did <laughs> yeah. i did like a couple on some stanley stellars and then i did the mm. whole job on gildan and i gave right. them the stanley stellars as well in the box yeah. just to kind of like prove a point and then they're yeah. like oh okay yeah. i understand it's like yeah, yeah. You could, if you'd have listened to like i'm showing them examples in the flesh and mm -hmm. they still didn't believe you and then whatever but yeah oh i'm glad you're on yeah. on my side of the fence with that one 
one hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. I was, to I was talking to Stanley Stella at Printway yesterday. No, yesterday. Oh yeah. I don't even Monday. Know Monday. Yeah. Sorry, my <laughs> days will merge. I don't Monday. know how I know when you were there, but I do. Yeah. I've, <laughs> I've, I've seen. Well, your name kept coming up, so that's why I was like, oh, I have to get him on because um, I think it was like because I would saw Pav and I saw Dan Castle Power there, and yeah, then yeah. Uh, I think Dave Roper. I don't know who else said it. Yeah, I was chat I was chatting to Dave. I had a big, big old chat with Dave because that's literally where we've got all of our stuff from. All of our screenview stuffs come from come mm. from Dave. So yeah, uh, yeah, big old chat with him about the jump to auto, but that's. Uh... <laughs> That's a whole other situation that is. That's that's crazy. <laughs> but yeah, we'd see. Are you scared about the auto, like of all the preparations that you have to do to put it in? Or like are you open? The, so I need a new space. We are fully maxed out. I have mm. measured every which way. <laughs> um, it will not fit. None of yeah. them will fit. The smallest of the small one will not fit. So <laughs> my I think I've been winding them up at Screenview World because before I got the Riley that I've got now, it was I was on the little 6'4 and I was saying to them, like, look, I need like send me all the measurements. Can I come up, look, this at the other? And it bottom line is it didn't fit. Yeah. So I am now back to I need a bigger space before I can get the auto. But then like Everything I'm just else. stuck in, I'm stuck in this thing of like. I can't get a bigger space because I need to up the output to pay for the bigger space. I can't up the output because I don't have an auto and I'm just going in circles. So yeah. my head's spinning. I'm almost at a point where I'm like, I feel like what I need to do is shut the doors to this print shop and start again with an auto <laughs> shop because yeah. it's like, just be I, like I see, squeezed yeah. on it and just open like squeezed pomegranate or something. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So just like, come back with something but it's i've got to change everything that i know everything that i do down to like drying cabinets because we use like 20 by 24 screens mm. so you know we need the bigger screens bigger dry cabinets bigger coaters to coat the screen it's literally we need to go through the shop by the ink and embroidery and all that side of it everything else has got to change yeah um so it's a hell of a leap yeah also, it's just like the power supply and mm -hmm. why do you need compressors? I don't even know, but apparently you need compressors. Yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. And pff, everything seems like a massive knock on effect of crap that you haven't even yeah. thought about. Um. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And it's just like the bills just like add zeros on to a manual shop. Like, oh, yeah. Like, wow. You know, we're now talking like extra <laughs> figures and it is just. Yeah mad but i i do it doesn't deter me i do really want to get there mainly because part of me one half of me is i'm a complete geek i love technology mm. and i just want it because it's technology and it's cool and it's big and it's just like it will look good on instagram <laughs> you know and it will just look really cool so that is like i need to get there just for myself yeah um so we'll see. We'll see what happens this year. If we can make it happen, we'll make it happen. If not, we'll uh, we'll try again next year. Good. Yeah. I, I feel like a lot of places just like jump around in that kind of stage. Mm -hmm. Even when they've worked for other people, they're kind of they're like hesitant to go that big because they've seen yeah. other people do it, maybe not as well as they could have. Um but I yeah. just feel like yeah, there's a kind of pressure of the financial. So if you are getting a brand new Massive. one, you've yeah. got that overhead. And then mm -hmm. you don't want to get into the thing of churning it out and not being proud of all the work that you're putting out because you're not going to be putting as much attention into it as what you're doing like today, are you? Like, yeah, you're visually seeing yeah. every single layer that goes down and checking it. Yeah. Um, well, yeah, scary, I, would like but... to I would like to stay. I don't know. It, you can't though, really, but I'd like to sort of stay. I feel like we're at a good um, like output daily, weekly, monthly. Like I feel it's good, and we're, we're definitely busy, which is good. Um, if I could just transition that into and just having an auto, but still operating at the same levels, you know, we're mm. operating like eighty percent capacity. I'd like to do that uh, on an auto, and because I've got an eight color press. I was like, yeah, I need to get an eight color press. You know, everyone keeps asking. Now I've got an eight color press. I'm like. 
why am I doing eight color jobs? Like they're mm. killing me. Like yeah. I'm spending so much time <laughs> yeah. on eight color jobs to the point where like, not only this year did we like up our prices, I actually up the color count as well. So to get an eight color job on the press, mm. you need to be ordering a lot more garments. Like we're not going to do it for sort of yeah. 40 garments anymore. You know, it's got yeah. to be 75 plus before yeah. I'm going to pull out eight screens. Cause I've done a job not too long ago and it took like two days and i was like oh, this can <laughs> this can <laughs> you, know, you, get, you know you get into the yeah. end of it and you're really like put, you're really happy to try and pull them squeegees and yeah. i was like chatted to to dave uh, on the screen for world stand and told him all about it he was like yeah you would have done that in about 45 minutes if that and i was like <laughs> right it, you know when i just feel like i'm just wasting my life like i'm yeah. just wasting time yeah so yeah, there's that part of it as well. Like I need to then bigger jobs that I love. Like I do love doing them because it is an art. Mm. But it just takes it also takes so long. Yeah. Yeah. I, I do think it's the right, it's probably is definitely the right decision as well, because it's not like you haven't mm. I think learning on manuals makes like literally forces you to be like the best printer possible because you have to know about angles, yeah. pressure, smoothing, smooth inks and all the layers and all the meshes. And then yeah. all you're doing really is kind of just watching the machine, but like you're just setting angles and things yeah. and speeds. Um, yeah, so I feel you're coming in, in at it in exactly the right way. So, yeah. Hopefully. I mean, and not only that, starting on manuals, I mean, probably like most people, I started on the little blue manual from Amazon, you know, where you're, yeah. there, is no, there is no wretch, there is nothing. You know, you're I, just doing single colours and... Yeah. Yeah, that's where I, you know, so we started way back there and slowly. So yeah, you know, every every new press that we get is like, wow, look at this, we've got off contact now, you know, and yeah. it's just making life so much easier. But yeah. And you never regret those jumps. Yeah. So why would you regret no. this one, hopefully? Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. Only financially. Yeah, it's sort of like, <laughs> yeah, it's the building. If it's the building. Get, if I had the building, yeah. I know. If I had the building, it'd be fine. Everyone literally the last like four or five people who i've interviewed all moved into their premises that they've got now because they know mm. someone who has a farm and the, the farms are like yeah not operating at full well they're just mm. the farms are just you know closing and yeah. stuff and just, then they're, yeah yeah they're folding and then screen printers are just going into their warehouses because in it's town, bad. It's just too, i mean too from too. where where we are um we're based in essex mm. so I mean, look, the, the world's pretty expensive no matter where you go, but it is quite expensive here property-wise. Yeah. They're building, like, loads of fancy, like, million-square-foot enterprise centres and all that. Like, there's, like, three or four of them around here, and I'm like, who is renting them units? They're, like, <laughs> 700,000 square foot. I'm like, can you not just build a little one? Like, yeah, on the end or, of it? Like, or just one of them, out. just yeah, partition yeah. it up, just for... Let's have a corner of it, please. Like, yeah. that would be fine, but... No, and then the ones that do come up, I did find a barn last year and it come up and it was perfect. And before I could even jump in the van and get down there from speaking to the guy, it had gone. Yeah. People are just on them and it's just, there's not, I feel like housing, I suppose, there's not enough of it. There's not enough units. So mm. every day, I say every day, like literally two, three times a week, I've got all the apps on my phone and I'm checking the things, like hoping that one comes up and it's just right at the right time but if you don't look you don't know you'll never find it so mm. yeah. we'll see we'll see that'll but, be a big move it'll be exciting though and it's it sounds yeah. like it's really imminent so like with business decisions are you like the did you start on your own are you like the main boss or like what's the yeah so yeah. it's so solely me yeah um the story very long and boring it goes way back to uh early teens mm. so i started off as a professional freestyle jet skier like <laughs> super super random <laughs> like su i get a that, professional like, freestyle jet skier exactly, that is awesome right? isn't it so yeah it's a bit like freestyle motocross right so we were doing like backflips, like 360 spins, like we all sorts of things at a national British championship level, world championship level. We were 
sort of up there. I got signed Ooh. at a young age, like straight out of school. I was sort of 15 years old signed with jet skiing. So that was sort of like my identity early years. From that, I was like, I want to make some sort of jet ski hoodies, etc. You know, went to a print shop, ordered them, they come in over the moon, was like, wow, look at these. Like, you know, I've got all my team gear. From that, it rolled over. People, people wanted to, to buy the Sejetsky hoodies, like, like my friends and things like that in the local area as I mm. sort of grew. Um, and then fast forward a bit from the back of that, I started a clothing brand, mm. which was called ATW Clothing. So that was um, a name that my brother thought of. Mm-hmm. And it stands for against the world clothing. So it tied in. It was very much like an action sport surf sort of brand because that's that's who I was. Yeah. Um, and then I and then sort of like I do with everything, I, I started going like, how do you make a t-shirt then? How are actually these being made? And I start to pull things apart. And I, like, I sort of always have done. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, of course, ended up with a vinyl cutter and a heat press in my bedroom and was heat pressing t-shirts and doing all things like that um so yeah that was 12 13 years ago that then rolled into the brand kind of took off um maybe a little bit like what you're doing now we were traveling around to festivals and events and things like that with the brand in a mobile sort of unit and we're selling the clothes Mm -hmm. we then scaled it to a point where we got to overseas manufacturing so complete custom cut and sew so my day used to look like making paper templates sending them over to the factory getting buying the rolls of fabric sending it to the cut and sew shop wow cool importing all the stuff at one point you know we were bringing in sort of half containers to full containers of track suits and this that the other um And then that's when like the embroidery machine come because I was like, right, I want to buy an embroidery machine to sort of do my own samples Mm. of beanies and things like that before I send them off. So it is mainly for like sort of sample purposes. Um, And obviously I still had the vinyl cutter, the heat press. So we were just, you know, doing the transfers and things like that. Um, And then it was, as I was actually out at a festival with with ATW, like with my brand, um, I got approached by a guy didn't know who he was at the time, got chatting to him for, you know, for a, a long time. And in the end, he like took my number, this, that, the other. He liked your stock. Um, and he gave me a call the next day and was like, yeah. So I sort of sent him some ATW bits, this, that, the other. He turned out to be, um, I say one of the biggest YouTubers in the country at the time. Oh. This was, you know, we're talking when it was that, that whole yeah. world was only just taking off. Mm. So he was sort of like 300,000 subs. And I didn't know this at the time. This was the first time I ever sort of saw someone blogging mm. in person. And it looked really strange. You're just sort of watching a guy with a camera. Now you <laughs> see it sort of all the time. Yeah. Um, so yeah, he started wearing my brand and then it sort of next leveled it a little bit more. So like he's an original <laughs> influencer. That's like yeah, ba- basically, yeah, yeah. yeah. And he's also the reason I'm now into printing. But he doesn't <laughs> he doesn't know this. That's why I won't say his name. I don't actually work with him anymore, which is sort of a bit sweet. But um, he rung me up and was like, look, can you make these T-shirts but put my logos on them? Well, at the mm-hmm. time, I, I sort of, I could because I could sort of like maybe vinyl press them and this, that, the other. But um, all of my stuff was made in China and done. it was just done over there. I didn't finish anything over here. It was all come in and I was mainly marketing the sales. Mm. um so I said yes because I you know uh, I'm I'm an idiot so I I sort of <laughs> I said yes and then and then I figured out how to do it um and actually so we started off embroidering some bits for him we could embroider the hats and stuff because we had the machine and then I went down the route of a DTG machine yeah so I ended up with a DTG machine and at the time was like yeah, this is amazing. You know, I can print like photographs onto garments and this, that, the other. And then obviously all the pros and cons of DTG comes into play. You very quickly work them all out. <laughs> and then I was like, right, okay, maybe screen print is the way to go. So every night I'm sitting there watching YouTube videos. It was, it was literally just that. I was just watching videos. Ended up buying the small screen print press. 
Mm. And then, uh, yeah, that was it. I suppose the rest is history. And then it's just grown from there. But that's over, that's over a span. Like, that's a very, very, very condensed version of, like, how I got into it. So, basically, it's, like, from the start, like, fresh out of school, um, vinyl printing, and then a little bit of embroidery. So, then we went to, like, the overseas cut and sew. So, then I've done all of that. And then got into, sort of, like, pushed into screen printing. Um so how, but, did, how did you make, why did, or like, have you made the switch from like pushing down the own brand stuff and pulling up manufacturing? Like, what was that? So like? that just happened very organically. So when I got, it's quite a weird thing because I see a lot of posts on Facebook on the print group. So, you know, about how guys getting customers and where to advertise and things like that. And it's such a strange feeling because <laughs> I, I got put, I got pushed into screen printing I wasn't even a screen printer I sort of got pushed into it and I figured it out and we got there and I was making merch for this big YouTube channel well then off the back of that he was like oh my mate's a YouTuber so I picked up another one and before long it was maybe within the space of 12 months we were printing for I say we yeah they, that it was me it was I was printing for for most of the big car YouTube brands, which mm. subsequently is how I got into like the automotive scene that I'm in now. Um, so I just sort of fell into it. I just yeah. had to learn quick to keep up with it. But I suppose it was off the back of having a brand and working with these guys for years, sort of influencing and marketing my own brand. So I had the connections with the guys. It was just mm. when they realized I could actually make the stock as well. That's yeah. when they were like, right, you're making it because we love your ATW stuff. You're making that. And then fast forward, even from that, you know, we're sort of early 20s then, 2021, I'm sort of 30 now. So this is like the span of it. So then like 10 years later, coming back to the point you just mentioned about sort of ATW and squeezed orange, um, fingers crossed, I can't say too much, but ATW is, should be sold by the end of next month. Cool. So uh, that will be my first company sort of launch from the bedroom yeah. to full manufacture scale to then sell. Nice. And then, yeah, we're solely just squeezed orange. Yeah. And that um, might even propel squeezed orange with a bit of cash, hopefully, or something. Or... We'll see. That might be the auto money. We don't know. <laughs> we don't know. We'll see, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Um, oh, I hope it's yeah, an auto so and a holiday for you because you need well, that break yeah. where you can just reconfigure what you're doing. And <laughs> I need something, yeah, yeah. So really, over the, I, I mean, because I still meet people now and they're like, "Wow, it's sort of only thirty, but like I've done, or I feel like I know I definitely haven't done. You know, I'm only touching the surface with the print, or I feel like I'm only touching the surface with mm. screen printing. Because it's so, you know, I haven't even played with discharge or water base and this, that, the other, but. I like what we're doing at the minute. I like the plastic work we're doing. I'm happy with the output. Our customers seem happy. So I'm sort of, I like to feel like we can just sort of keep it yeah. where we are, you know, because yeah. like, otherwise you start opening cans of worms and oh, I know what, you know, it's I, just. I think, I think the cans of, of worms are, are very, very tempting. And yeah. I, I am a massive geek for it. I've got so many, I'm just looking at like walls and walls of ink yeah. over there of different systems. I, yeah. yeah, I've got to points where I've got like six colors on press and I'm printing it and I'm also like as hot as, as like blistering yeah. hot. And I'm yeah. thinking, is this worth it? Like, I'm not mm. sure if it is. I'd rather have like a solid, beautiful print in my eyes <laughs> that, yeah. that is like yeah, yeah. vibrant, consistent. And I know I can get to the end without crying and <laughs> it's yeah. profitable and I don't know yeah. I, I feel like uh, I feel like I need to do more research on it but then hearing people like you as well mm. say like oh no I've done my whole thing on Plasol it's fine because I feel like we're like I feel bad for using Plasol because everyone's like oh it's not environmentally friendly but I don't think mm. that's correct until you get up into the really big shops where it is more energy efficient to cure water-based things, but that's just... Yeah. I feel yeah, like at I our mean, scale, we can cure it energy-wise much more efficiently if it's possible, because it just goes through the dryer. Yeah, it just goes through the little dryer. Yeah, yeah. Yes, yeah, I don't... 
I don't know. I mean, I know there's probably chemicals and stuff in the ink. Um, maybe. I don't, I don't know. Um, I feel like a lot of them have been taken out anyway because of the, like, the, they've, they've been forced to take them out. And then... Yeah. Then the back end chemicals, all like the washout chemicals and the cleaning chemicals, they're basically drain safe now with like Franmar and all that and easy way going on. Yeah, easy way is what we use. Yeah. So technically. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. And then it's like your sort of your filtration, you know, we don't throw it straight into the ocean. Um, yeah. it's you know, it's it's just being sensible with it, I suppose. Yeah. You know, yeah. we discard of all the ink. I say you be ink things correctly, but like, yeah, we we generally take them down to like the local but i don't even know if that's how you're supposed to do it we don't just throw them in the bin basically we take them down to the local bin like the local recycling thing yeah, and yeah. throw it into like the, the chemical one or whatever it is you know we put it in there so i don't know them mm. what they do with it they might yeah. just throw it in the landfill but i don't i don't know people just push it into um, the back of the other yeah, big skip. Like, <laughs> yeah, like, yeah how do yeah, you it know it all goes in the same bin i don't know but we try like i try like i physically we do that we take them down there yeah. Um, and even that's getting harder now because they don't let vans in, so we're having to like, <laughs> you've got to go in your them in. Yeah, got, <laughs> got, yeah, got to smuggle them in in the back of my dad's car or something like yeah. dirty old tubs of plasticide. But yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's something I've not. I, I don't. I don't. I just don't have the space in the shop for the water based stuff. And like literally, we've just got shelves and shelves and shelves. Every job comes in is a new pan phone. It's another pot on the shelf and. Mm. Yeah. yeah, I would love to do. I really would love to do it because I, you know, I feel like for me, I'm I I want the end product to be as good as I can make it. And if I can go, do you know what? Water based. If I could do some tests myself and then go, actually, that is better. Um, I will in a heartbeat change the whole shot. Mm. Like that. That's that's what would happen if we done it and was like, yeah, this is actually. 10 times better than the past on what we're doing like customers are going to love this we will change it in a heartbeat um mm. it's just having that sort of r d time that um, is where like magna colors help you out they have this whole mm. system in place to do like shop swaps where they like analyze what you've got already and then they mm. like lead you through it but um yeah so i'm i'm actually going to visit magna colors soon and yeah. I'll, I'll ask all the questions that are annoying me. And if you've got any, yeah. I'll, I'll literally I'll going, pull them you know. over. Yeah. 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 So, what, sure are you, so what are you on then? Are you more plastic or more water based? I'm sure you probably answered this a million times. But. So for I've got it all there. So it's like I've got all of it. Um, mm. If it's like a customer job and mm. they're, I don't know, uh, a streetwear brand or something. I will mm. probably do it in plaster because most of the time right. they want a huge open area of white. They want yeah. the white to be brilliant, smooth, mm -hmm. bright white. And they always yeah. want it on like a black garment like that. Yeah. So yeah. I'm not going to be there doing <clears throat> oversized prints in water-based ink when I've got 50 hoodies and it's like mm -hmm. physically hard work and I don't want details drying in. So it's yeah. like, yeah, I yeah, need to get the, yeah. I need to, uh, I need to have order 50 hoodies and put out 50 hoodies. And the only way I know how to do that is manually with parcel. But I have experimented quite a lot with like, if it's my own designs, like these kind of things, I will yeah. do water-based, I will do glow in the dark, I'll do all the fun ones that I can like put in. Yeah. I'll do puff, whatever, but. Yeah, yes, yeah. So we get asked for that a lot. It's like, we do a, a bit of puff print yeah you've got puff on your... mm. yeah it's cool i like mm. that i like to think we've we've mastered it i'm happy with it no, i like it when it comes in it doesn't it doesn't sort of you know when the job comes in you're not like oh god it doesn't scare me you know yeah. i know I, we know the ratios we're mixing now and it it looks good there was all that mm. we, we tested do you base it don't you base it this that the other mm. so we sort of went through all of that and um yeah, we get have, asked for it quite a bit now. Have you ever done it where you've got it perfect and then you went, oh, mm. can that puff up a bit more? You put it through yeah, the dryer again yeah. and it's just like sweated out and died. <laughs> yeah. And that's like, no, I yeah, that's it. It like, it like <laughs> blows, doesn't it? Like massive cracks and all that. Yeah, to be fair, we got, I've done that not too long ago, actually, um, <laughs> where we were testing exactly that. I was trying to do a mm. massive slab of 
or puff print on a t-shirt yeah that didn't work <laughs> yeah it come, it come out of the dry and i picked it up and it's almost like snowing if you shake the t-shirt it all just falls off it's yeah horrendous. but it's it is fun when you get it and then other people are like yeah. oh, how, how did you do that i was like well first time every time because i don't mind yeah you just yeah. that's that's yeah. the reliability that i'm talking about though once you've got that consistency yeah. of like your process then you can do all the fun mm -hmm. exciting images and things so like yeah with your like separations and stuff, you're talking about simulated mm -hmm. process. Are you doing, are you using something like separation studio or? Literally yeah. separation yeah. studio, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so we worked, we actually had a, a sort of quite close with them now because we have uh, an Epson ET1400 that we mm -hmm. print uh, the steps for it. Yeah. And I'm very, very jealous of your printer. I keep looking at it, like every time <laughs> I see it in your, like your transparency printer. Yeah. Uh, that will be another upgrade for us. I need a bigger, I need to output big films. But I, uh, I remember it not being very expensive because they've only kept space. this model in just for screen printers, by the way. Yeah, I see. So yeah, they, yeah. Were, they tried to get rid of it loads of times and then they're like, the screen printers keep buying this bloody printer. <laughs> so. Yeah, yeah. So there's that. So Step Studio didn't work or whatever, wasn't compatible with my printer. So I was. I was on like video calls with them, um, like on the online chat for ages, getting that yeah. sorted, and we kind of became like good friends with them. So yeah. uh, they sort of helped me out with the steps and things like that. Um, but now, no, for the last year or two, it's been it's been good as gold, um, and we do all the steps in house, or I've, I've taken them all in house. We used mm. to sort of sub them out, we sub one or two of them out. Um, but now we've pulled it all back in house. Yeah, I'm, I'm is, really enjoying it. Like I've got separation mm. studio. Like I think I put it next. That's what I do. Yeah, <laughs> NXT, that's it. That and, and, and NXT. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> next. Yeah. I say it quickly. So yeah. it, it's not wrong. Um, but I'm doing loving it. It's like all yeah. those hours I've spent, um, just like accident, like doing an Illustrator and accidentally like shifting a little reg mark, and that screwed mm -hmm. me up when I come to it. It's like, no, you don't need to do yeah. that because. It's just like a template that goes over the top and you don't yeah. even have to nest it on the printer. It knows how big your printer is. Yeah. So it's doing like three positives next to each other in two mm -hmm. rows. And I'm like, yeah, fucking hell, that's good. But yeah. do, you, do you do it in separation studio? And then I heard um, uh, one guy, he brings it into Photoshop afterwards. To tweak no, it. so I, no. Just, I just, I just, I just, like literally everything in Sep Studio, and then it prints through Emerald or whatever the accurate yeah. is nowadays. Like it, yeah, it just syncs straight through that, prints through. Um, yeah. I've never successfully managed to export like a a um, a separation out of Sep Studio. I mm -hmm. used to try like like if someone I, I was trying to help a shop out once, and I was like, yeah, I'll do you know I'll do the set for you quickly. Done the steps, and I was like, I don't know how to export it. Like I kept trying. And, I've never done it. So yeah, I've never mm. taken anything from Zep Studio and then put it into Photoshop or Illustrator. Yeah. So I know there's a way, I just don't, I don't. You don't need it. So you don't. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I don't. I, I could find out a way, but mm. I'm sure there's something. So, yeah, so you're just putting on top. Right? I like the way that it can like whack in an underbase in like two seconds mm -hmm. as well and stuff like that. We're, yeah. we're going to do a lot yeah. of videos on that because I think it's a huge topic that's, preventing a lot of people from getting into like really nice multicolor work. Um, uh, what else was I about to ask you about that? Um, oh, I've just gone blank. Oh no, so before you found out about something like Separation Studio, were you doing like colorful work as CMYK or something? Were you ever in no, that area? So we were either exporting, um, or, so, sorry, exporting, outsourcing the SEPs, um, or I, I was like just doing them in Illustrator or Photoshop, mm. which was all right, but we were not getting the level of detail that we were doing yeah. now. And like Step Studio is definitely like, this is like a plug for Step, like any separation software maybe would de would step your game up. Um, mm. It did us like drastically, yeah. drastically. Now like we can take the jobs on. Um, like one of my favorite prints was a, was a center print, which was like the, the race car print. I think yes. it's on my personal That's Instagram. Oh, you've that's, got quite. Oh, you've got lots in that industry. That's what I'm thinking about. Yeah, 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 yeah. There's, there's loads. But that's like one of my favorite prints, and that was one of the first ones I ever sort of like fully set myself. Um, 
yeah, like all the half tones like that's the one that we really that I feel we worked it out on mm. and now we kind of keep them settings like that was the one that got me and now from posting that on instagram we get so many i say like copycat art pieces come through the inbox of like hey can you do this and you're yeah. like oh yeah it's similar to the one we done yeah mm. so it's yeah, kind of american it's isn't it like i feel like the yeah. americans love that stuff they it's like yeah. it looks like it's yeah. been airbrushed onto a mm-hmm. I don't know yeah. yeah that's it it's got like all the the mist around it and all yeah. stuff like that yeah 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 so we have to do all of that um, a big american flag yeah. <laughs> yeah, literally yeah. yeah 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 that's interesting also i've seen that you're pretty much the biggest um screen printer on tiktok i imagine are you you must be because like you because why I, 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 I did a bit of research on your things and you've gone from yeah. like normal screen print videos and then you've gone yeah. into like, I want to call it ASMR, which is that kind of, yeah. do you know about ASMR? You do, don't you? Because you've done I the... do know about it, yeah. yeah, but I didn't do that for that. Mm. It just happened to, <laughs> it, it happened to tie in. It happened to tie in. Yeah. Can you, can you explain to people who don't know what that is, what that is? Because your videos so, are basically like... I, yeah, I don't, I don't like to listen to it myself. I just know what it is. It's, but yeah. it's them, like they, they whisper and they do all that stuff, don't they? And it like... I don't know what it does, but it like makes your hair stand up on your neck and this, that, the other. And some people are like really susceptible to it. Mm. Um, and clearly a lot of people are on TikTok because the videos just go absolutely viral. What mm. it is, is it's the squeegee sound. You know, when you pull the squeegee on the, on the, on the screen, it's yeah. that you can't replicate that sound. And that's the one that just gets them every yeah. time. Yeah. Um, but other so it's than TikTok, like satisfying I, I sounds. Really mm. Yeah. Yeah. Basically. Yeah. But I, I don't really use TikTok. I know it sounds silly, but <laughs> um, even to the point where, like, if, if my girlfriend's trying to send me a TikTok video, she will she will WhatsApp me the link because I, I yeah. do not go on TikTok. Yeah. Um, but when I do, I go on, post a video, like a loop video that we do, and leave it. And then, like, it, just, it they just go. Like, I, don't, <laughs> I don't know. I can't, I can't explain it. Like the first one, she kind of pushed me on there and was like, look, post these to TikTok like this, because like I was making them for Instagram Reels. Mm. Um, she was like, just put them on TikTok. So I was like, nah, okay. I like, don't know what it is. Got the TikTok account, done all that, posted it, <laughs> come off, I've got it. I think by the time I posted the full video, we were at like 25 million views. I had yeah. email from TikTok that have now like, sign me as a creator or whatever it is you know and then like uni lad have messaged me or lab by yeah, yeah. Like they've signed and now they post all the content and now i'm like wow all of this is off the back mm. of tiktok but like anyone will always ask me is but do you get any work from it and i'm like i, I don't know no like, yeah. i don't i don't think we because do. I, I, I don't think, think they contact you on say. tiktok do they no no, they go no. To so Instagram we've got, I've got the, then... I got the emails and all that turned off, like mm. uh, the DMs and everything turned off on there because I, I, like, I literally don't follow anyone. Yeah. Um, but yeah, a few of the videos went 20 million, 27 million, etc. Like got went huge. Mm. Um, but yeah, no, did, did anything come of it? No, it's not like we've done mad print work for, for TikTok people. We've done one yeah. or two jobs, but yeah, I know when I post it because the inbox fills up, but it's all sort of international requests mm. i'm just like yeah a lot of middle east requests like oh can you print and i'm like yeah we don't really ship there <laughs> you know um surely there must be someone that can do it cheaper out that way but, i know i feel like it's it's yeah. a good oh, i don't really know how to explain it it's a good thing to generate buzz and excitement yeah and also it's good for like actually as a tool to editing and stuff and then yeah. you, you don't genuinely get leads from there because they can't contact you directly anyway unless yeah. you follow them sometimes. Um, mm. Depends if you've got like a business or a personal account, I suppose. And then yeah. I feel like they find you on Instagram and then that's like yeah. your CV, your portfolio, nice one. And then if you mm. get them through to the website, that's when they're serious. So, mm. yeah. It's- See, for me, I turned off. I did, I did, I don't know if it's on there now. I did have the Instagram link on there. And mm. then... I was just getting spammed with like followers that I didn't really want. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I, I don't know. want loads of followers. Like it was loads of followers. I'm like, yeah, you're never going to interact with me. Like, you're sort of these weird names and weird accounts that I'm like, 
cool, but so I, it, it was all coming through from TikTok. So I, I turned it off. I, I completely deleted all the Instagram link from TikTok because I didn't want 10,000 followers that meant nothing. I know. Um, and then they just die off when they realise that you're not posting the, the, the content that they're going for as well. Yeah. So it yeah. looks like you're, you're not getting your normal organic traffic. And you're like, am I doing something wrong? Have I yeah, upset lots of people? For, yeah. 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 yeah, it's weird, isn't it? Mad old world social media. As much mm. as I'm on it, I'm kind of not on it. Um, <laughs> I always say that like, if I wasn't sort of like running business now, I wouldn't have social media. Yeah. Um, that's why all my pages, is you're very ready to find a selfie of me. It's mainly um, just work. I just post work stuff yeah. and then uh, come straight back off of it and try and, at the moment, try and spend as less time on there as, as possible because you can yeah. sort of get... Consumed by it. I know. I, yeah. I I actually don't have TikTok on my phone. I M has it on hers. She does the filming. Yeah. But if I I did find myself, I was just like in a. I'm going to call it a TikTok hole. It's like a yeah. Some kind of like yeah. You're like fucking hell. How long was that? Like that was that must yeah. have been like half an hour. What am I doing? Delete it off. And then if you do need to go in there, put it on again and take it off. It's horrendously addictive that one but yeah. that's the blessing of like the phone now i've got i've actually set it up the other day it's like you know you can put your phone in different modes like do not disturb work mode home mode so i've actually got that set up so as soon as i get to work it goes into work mode where emails whatsapp business come through social media turns off mm. etc otherwise because i like you say a bit like that i was getting to the point where your phone's up on the shelf on the press but i can see it in the corner of my eye backlight coming on and you're looking over and check, oh, someone's replied and you reply. And then before long, it's just such a distraction. Mm. And then you forget the print you were doing. The next hoodie you do is wrong. And you're like, oh, bloody social media every <laughs> and, time. So, And then does it work the other way around so you can switch off all your emails when you get home? Are you good at exactly. that? Exactly. So yeah. second, well, actually, the second I come home, like my phone will almost die. Like there's, I've said it to like <laughs> only, five pe- only five people can actually contact me. The rest mm. of the time, it's like my phone switched off. That's it. Mm. Um, and I, I like that because I got into, over the last month or two, I know people talk about sort of burnout and things like that. Um, that definitely happened to me. And I definitely got myself into a bit of a, a, bit of a hole mm. where it might have made me um, not unwell. I don't want to, I don't, I, yeah, I don't want to sort of like, yeah, I don't know, not not depressed or whatever, but it definitely got me down. I wasn't, yeah. you know, I didn't have the energy. I was what so just consumed. There was just everyone like DMs, WhatsApps, emails, tech, just all day, every day. And I'm just eating it up and like replying and doing this, doing that. Business is booming, but you're just completely consumed. So now mm. I've had to make a thing of like, you know what, like it, it's kind of like, sort of I don't know what the thing is but like I think of your own success like mm. I kind of build it up that like I, I, I have to accept that I can't reply to all my emails every day because you yeah. know you're getting hundreds mm. and it's it's weird because you spend years building a business you know you have to reply you know you're on this hustle your business your business your business um but then you physically can't and then I go right well do I need a a reception, you know, I'd say receptionist. Do you need sort of like a, a, a PA maybe? I hate that term, like PA, but like, do you yeah. need someone answering the emails? Admin staff, do you need admin staff to, to run, to literally give my phone to and go deal with that? Well, but then just when does it stop? You're just facilitating more and more and more and more and growing. Exactly. You're literally mm. paying, you're paying to put someone in an office to answer an email because someone's impatient to wait 24 hours. I'm not saying we ignore emails. I mean, like, I get back to them all within, like, a 24-hour thing. But, yeah, it's that's mm. that's my thing. I suppose, mm. so what do you guys do? How long do you take to answer an email? If someone emails you, how, how are you getting back to them? How do you prompt them? Do you have auto-reply? I think I actually got an auto-reply from you when I emailed you earlier. <laughs> Whoops. You auto-reply uh... Yeah, no, I, I see that. Because I actually... I took notice that and I read it. it was like, hmm, might copy some word in that and set my own because yeah. I definitely need something like to be like, look, we've got your email. We appreciate it. We love it. 
just give me a minute to reply. Like, don't then WhatsApp me 10 minutes later and be like, hey, just send it, you see it. And it's and like, it, oh. Well, we, yeah, it, there, there is like a whole section of customers who, like we do lots of different things though. So it's difficult. Like we've got yeah. people who want pre-exposed screens, people who are like asking advice because they're like in a situation printing or something. Um, mm. There's lots and lots of variety of customers. Um, I I get the I get a certain amount of them. M gets all the print inquiries, and she's quite good. She's got absolutely yeah. tons of templates and copy and paste for every situation, yeah. so she yeah. can actually just quickly pat them off. But at the moment, yeah. we're actually like we're pushing away so much work. It's it yeah. like we're like going okay. If you, in your situation, want to wait up to like four to six weeks, and yeah, okay, um, yeah, this is the minimum order. You've got all your yeah. artwork, and these are these are some other hoops that you have to jump in. If you are happy with all of that set of criteria, then I will do all your mock-ups and stuff for you. If right. you just if you don't want to do that, then we're not the one for you. And here's a list of our like recommended print shops right to. yeah yeah so you then, actually sort of get to the point where your book like your your books are closed if you like yeah um you sort so, of yeah, yeah as of, as of like this last week we're not working mm. for anyone who we haven't worked for before like, right it's not happening because wow. you just can't deal with it because it's just like yeah it's got crazy to isn't them it? Right see, from that's, the beginning. yeah and they might yeah go, see that's bomb. where i'm at <laughs> Um, yeah well this is it and you always get the going to be the next biggest thing and they try and order 12 pieces and yeah, yeah. it's it's yeah you're right it's start, it, that's the thing I think the tedious thing is having the same conversations with people yeah I'm just bored of it but I the, think you I've know, hit, just, hit yeah. the wall like you have I just can't be dealing yeah, with I it yeah I think I, I did I did massively start this month to the point where I was like this, I'm just like it was honestly like I think words were coming out of my mouth of like it would be so much happier if I was just a screen printer in someone else's shop. Mm. Just hire me, I'll print. I don't need this. Like mm. I just I I mean it. I'm here. <laughs> I'm here for the love of the print. Like that. I I I, I am a screen printer. I always yeah. will be. No matter mm. how big the shop is, I always want to run the press. And I say that now. And you'll ask me again in ten years, and I'll be like, yeah, I'll never see the press anymore. <laughs> you know. Yeah. But it's. Right now, I, I always have been a screen printer, mm. and that's it. That's that's all I've done, sort of all I know. Um, the whole business thing on the side is a little bit like getting a little bit too much, you know. It's just yeah. like you say, I think I'm in a thing now. We're already at um, you had a guest on here, I forget that is it Supreme Screen, yeah. maybe? Yeah, he's I made very, that apologies, he's very eloquent. Yeah. yeah, so he's like. Stuff two day turnarounds, et cetera. And I'm like, wow, we're three weeks, you know, I'm three weeks. And then it got me thinking like, is everyone on a two day turnaround? Like, he, he does uh, a lot of like, I, would, I, I don't want to call it like print on demand, but he has the stock on a shelf. People right. on some kind of website okay. and he fulfills it. So it's not like yeah. he is talking to the customer and negotiating a lot of his jobs. I mean, he will do right. some of that, but that's the two-day turnaround stuff. It's kind of like amazing. Yeah, he's flipping pre, kind of like yeah. sorted jobs. Sort of. Yeah, as far as yeah. I can tell. Oh, yeah, okay, kind of like, right. Yeah. That yeah, see, that makes more sense because, like you say, for like three weeks, I'm like, well, look, this is like the timeline. By the time I order the stock, this is when it comes in. Then we count it and go, they're missing five larges. We go back to them <laughs> and then take, you know, that we have to factor all that in because it happens so much. It happened mm. like literally today. We're missing like a whole pack of white yeah. large teas. And yeah. you're like, this is just getting tedious. Mm. And then it, it pushes you back a week, just getting the, you know, and now that's not going to go on press till mo that's sort of Monday next week now. Mm. Um, so yeah, it's one of them, isn't it? It's more like, if people don't want to, um, if people want to work with you, yeah, a bit like what you're doing. If people, you know, want to work with you because of your services and they they understand what you put out and they appreciate the work, then they'll probably wait. I suppose, won't they? They'd be happy to wait. Um, they always do. And all these like deadlines yeah. are bullshit anyway, unless it's like literally yeah. an event, which I don't do event tops anyway. So 
good riddance. Yeah. Because if the event yeah. drops, I always gild an offer at the loom, some bullshit or yeah, that's some true, wicking yeah. shirt that I don't want to touch. Um, yeah. But talking about like this lifestyle and business thing, um, mm. we have our accountant is basically our business mentor person as well because we get on calls with right. her every single week. So I was, I was yeah. talking to her today actually. And she kind of like helped us realize that you don't have to work nine till five. So like our opening hours aren't nine till five. They're like on, on, on like all the signage in Google and stuff. They're like 10 till four, Tuesday mm. to Thursday. So it's right, like, yes. yeah. really, we're a bit uncontactable on Mondays and Fridays. And on Fridays, mm. we literally go in the afternoon to the gym and just work out of this nice little office in the in the gym. Yeah. Have a little nice. swim, have a din- have a lunch, do some like we just listen to the podcast that we've just recorded. You just have yeah. force in shit that is your time. And then people can't yeah. call us because the reception doesn't work in that room. So it's like Right. Yeah, yeah, it's got it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Nice, no, nice, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. so I thought about like getting another phone. And then I thought thought about your <laughs> other guests, like the master stitch. Yeah. Oh like, my God. I, yeah. I quote him seven times a day. I'm like, this guy doesn't have a website, doesn't it? Like, and I'm like, this, this is the future. I know. <laughs> this is the future. I, he's got some things like, on his. Like, he's going right, hasn't he? He's funny. He's yeah. hilarious. But he's also like, doesn't take any shit. Works with exactly the niche that he wants to, kind of like you. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Stuck to his caps, his high build caps, got known for that. And then um, yeah, everyone else can bugger off because they can't find him anyway. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 heaven. I say he's got it made. I mean, I know he's probably got his own battles and things going on, but yeah, that's that's relent- that's just how it's got to be, isn't it? That's yeah. that's what you got to do. I think I think you got to find your niche. That's a bit like us with sort of plus. So I think we've now carved out that's kind of our image of what we do, these like vectors of cars and things like that, mm. you know, six to eight colours. We do that if you want that and your your art has been done by probably one of three people that we are really good <laughs> friends with now. Yeah. Um, you know, they did, They almost just send me the art direct. Yeah, they're like, this is coming in. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, it's, the art comes through. We've, we've got sort of shared Dropbox folders with them and this, that, the other. Um, yeah, unless we're sort of coming through them channels, that's what we do. Yeah. Um, yeah, when it when it's like you get some weird stuff come through, you it's almost like you say, I mean, we do turn away a lot now. I do find myself turning away a lot now. Probably 50% of the emails that come through, maybe more, we turn away. What kind of things um, are you turning away? Like just the minimum, they're not hitting minimums or the, the not hitting the minimums is is the classic. Um, now we've introduced the higher MOQ on bigger, you know, more colours on the eight colours and the six colours. Mm. Um, so all of that as well. And we've been very sort of relentless with that. It's like, nope, sorry, you need 50 shirts for a six colour. You know, yeah. that, no, we can't, we're just not going to sort them screens up. So that also turns them away. So it's these little hurdles we've put in, but then a lot of the time it's stuff that comes through and either the artwork is not suited for us. Like I look at it and go, okay, yeah, I see what you're trying to do, but yeah, that's not for us. I don't think screen print is your best media for that. Yeah. Maybe most of the time it's us being, shop. I'm not being an arsehole. I am, I always try and actually guide them to what, they're going to get the best result out of what they want. Yeah. It's like they think they want screen print. That's just because they know the word screen print. But actually, this is a vinyl job or this is a transfer job or it's it's just not for us. And they're just going to waste their money. Yeah. We're being cruel to be kind, Baron. We're actually Well, this is it, isn't it? Yeah, that's what I'm learning now. I'm I'm getting to that stage now where it's (laughs) you go through the thing of saying yes to everything. And now I'm like, wait a minute. I don't need to be dead. Yeah, it's it, the reality hits you when you're on press and you're like, I don't need to be doing this. Mm. <laughs> you know, yeah. then you make a little note and make a little note going like, say no to this. And uh, it's like, yeah, we start doing that. But mm. for the most part, 99% of the time, it's amazing. I love it. Yeah. The art's cool. We print some really good stuff. And you do really it's good photography good as well. Like 
is that just like a, a huge open how are you doing the photography you've just got like a square of your studio that's clean and you're just so that <laughs> is that's the warehouse floor the warehouse is we're split over two locations oh. so for want of a better word that's a big self-storage unit that mm. is like just down the road it's uh 600 square foot maybe something like that fully racked out with with the stock that we're sort of running over the next three weeks mm. so that is the thing in there is on a three-week turnaround so it goes in comes out in three weeks hopefully um <laughs> and then yeah so then the space of that is the floor and i go in and i sweep it and i do that every saturday and i take all the photos and then that's it and then the rest of the week is covered in boxing again oh, nice um but yeah so photography is um again that's all me the cameras and stuff that's hobby I've been yeah. doing that for a long time as well. Like, I feel like I've been doing everything 10 years at this point, but I, yeah, <laughs> I picked up cameras a long, long time ago. Mm. Um, and yeah, we've got various lenses, GoPros, Canon 5Ds. And yeah, so I'm, I'm in love with the photography, in love with the editing. Um, yeah, that's good. And it's one of them skills that helps. Oh, you wear a GoPro on your head. That's another thing yeah. I was going to say. Yeah, yeah. That was like, I was like, obviously you notice that within like two seconds of looking at your TikToks. It's just, you've literally got a different perspective than anyone else. Mm -hmm. So that also ties into the ASMR kind of videos because yeah. like, you know, this is like a, just a little editing thing for anyone else. But when they're making TikTok videos, don't take all the sounds off, all the natural sounds, keep them in because they make it so much more interesting and real don't they like yeah, yeah. that's why you've kind of i feel like you've just taken the music off because it works so beautifully with all the the kind of scrapes and and... i didn't want to jump on i didn't want to jump on the trends because you know mm. like you need to use music that's in a trend at that current time or whatever's yeah. going on the on that the you page thing yeah i'm not that into it i don't sit there and go oh this music's trending so i just literally go on post my post come off again yeah. um yeah I, I i'm not too sure what's trending on there so i just kept it with with no music and i feel like maybe i was correct if i done that at the time is because i just had a thought of like it would break the algorithm mm. I don't know. I, I, I got no idea. I don't, I don't try, I try not to think about it. So, I, you know, I don't care about what times I post. I don't think about any of that. Yeah. But I thought if I post it, like with just no music, no nothing, there's, there's no algorithm to sort of get involved. Yeah. It can't it may, sift it what, in the right direction. It, it, yeah. It can't sort of filter it out and put it into categories. It's just there. And then lo and behold, it kind of works. So maybe mm. it, you know, I did, I did, I knew what I was doing. I knew I wanted to post videos. I wanted it to be dead quiet in the shop. So they were all filmed on like a Saturday when no one was there. You know, there's not any other noise going on in the background. Um, that was the plan. And then it, it, I guess it worked, but I yeah. don't know what worked. I can't say whether if I put music on them videos, they wouldn't have got them I, views. I, I, don't, I didn't, I don't know. yeah. When I was watching your videos, I genuinely was like, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. With the music ones. And then yeah. I slowed down because it was so jarring not having the music. So yeah. I'm pretty sure it's you taking the music off. Um, right. There we go yeah. then. Yeah. So that was, mm. that was the plan. I say it was thought out at the time to a degree. I was like, let me just leave it. See if I can break the algorithm. They started to go. And then, yeah, it just kind of, that then became my theme. Yeah. And then that was it. I'm very, I like the, um, I mean, I suppose from starting clothing brands and building clothing brands, it, we're very like themed and branding. So when we get something that sticks, like all my photos, like if you saw, or I'd like to think if you saw a photo of like a garment printed, sort of like my photo of a garment printed, but someone else posted it, even you now would be like, ah, that looks like a squeezed orange photo. Yeah, he's like, nicked that, I've, yeah. like, yeah, like, you would kind of know and then that's it. It doesn't need to have logos or watermarks on it. You just know, like, mm. yeah, that, that looks like him. Like mm. that looks like squeezed orange work. And then- I, I need to ask you where works. squeezed orange comes from as well, Dan. So that I think is my dad's genius, right? Um, there is literally like most things he's done, nothing behind it at all. 
It yeah. was the fact that we had ATW clothing going and then these other guys wanted custom work done. And I was maybe a little bit sort of big headed at the time or something. I was like, well, I'm not doing custom work through like my clothing brand. I'm like yeah. protecting my clothing brand. Yeah, that makes so I'll sense. I'll print for you, but like this company called Squeezed Orange is going to invoice you and sort of deal with you. And then that's it then just formed its own thing and subsequently become bigger than bigger than ACW did. So yeah, yeah there you go. Out of, no, oh. out of nowhere, literally out of nowhere that one. <laughs> and then um yeah what was your i'm just gonna like ask you just a couple of little roundup questions that um yeah. yeah so like what would you say your biggest shop hack would be um in the studio do you think it's warming up the ink or what what do you think that's so the most? yeah so warming up the ink to me that i mean my hand, everyone should be doing not, it anyway <laughs> they're probably not hacks they may be reminders so my shop reminders are Warm up the ink, warm it and you think you need to warm it up, get it nice and warm, mix it, you'll have a much better time. You, trust me, your arms will thank you. The next one is when we expose the screen, um, we've got a dunk tank. Now, I know a lot of people use dunk tanks and they just put their screen in there, they give it literally a dunk, 10 seconds. I leave mine in there for like a minute, two minutes. So like screen burn in the tank, I'm then sorting out the next one. And then we go back to it. So when I pull it out, it's pretty much already washed out. Mm. Um, and then we just go over it with a hose rather than sort of beating the shit out of it with a jet wash. Mm. So I just like to burn the screens carefully. It probably makes no difference at all. If you've, if you've exposed your screen correctly, it won't make any difference. I know that. But I just like to think by not blasting them half tones with a powerful jet wash, yeah. Just letting letting the stencil fall out into the dunk tank on its own accord. Mm. I feel it gives me a much nicer, cleaner screen. It gets all the scum off it, everything. We have no issues with our with the screens. Yeah. Um, so that's probably like hack number two or reminder number two. They're pretty much the biggest ones, is that's that's yeah. what we do. And then when you get on press, you're on press. Fine. Yeah. So like um just like out of me just being nosy are, are you using any like special like s like bin thread meshes or anything like that or just no. standard no we standard. we I, I break i broke two screens today you may have seen on instagram like i break screens so often i don't yeah. know why i just do i we we print a lot we reclaim a lot you know they're being reclaimed two three times a week or whatever i suppose like most shops that might not be a lot but i feel you know month two months out of a screen and the glue's gone. Really? We just um, we, we just we just replace them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah you just beat them up. Yeah. I'll, yeah. I'm, I'm definitely going to think of some more questions later, but I feel like um, I've taken up a lot of your time. Yeah. Um, no, it's been fun. It's been yeah. fun. I've enjoyed it. So yeah. I like I like that we've got lots of crossover as well. It's um, mm. yeah. It's fun. Um, so I've got I got I got one question. One quick question because it's, oh, it's something that's really really bugging me. What do you do or what are you doing at the moment when you get a shirt and it's got a hole in the side seam? And I think you get it mid you're getting it like mid production, but you've ne you've never had that. No. I'm getting not it enough. like not, not if three I'm times using this, nice this shirts. Month. Really? This is really? on like the top we're using. We only use two brands. Um and you know you you you're threading them on halfway through production you like pick up the next large and you're like it's got a hole in the side seam really and it's like i've had it twice maybe three times this month to the point where like am my crediting customer am i trying to get another shirt and hold the job you know hold press till tomorrow we can't really do that hmm. it's really to the point where like we're having general daily conversations about how do we deal with with this hmm. um about getting but more yeah. shirts in and stuff. But I, I felt a lot of those problems went when I like up to, to the better ones. But if that happened to me, I would just get some thread out and sew it myself. And sew it back up. That's a lot of the time, if it's on the seam, we can do that. But mm. yeah, we have stuff come through or it have like a little red sticker on it and there's a hole in it or a pulled thread. And you're like... Is this with Stanley Seller or is this with Builder Brand? Or should we not like... Mm. Not, not want to stay? <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, yeah. But... Yeah. Oh, yeah, one, one, just, or the, one or the yeah. other, it was more, just more frequent with one. Yeah. 
get your they replace them. They're good as they're good as gold. They replace them, and they know. But, but it it's not messes. That, that, it's not the point. Pass. No, no. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. So that was that. That was my only question. Really, is like, how do you deal with with things like that, or what do you do with a misprint then? So if you get a misprint, are you are you crediting customer? Are you trying to reprint? I reprint it. I, I reprint. We give people what they ordered 100 percent of the time because yeah, you, you have to yeah yeah i i think i have to like i know like the when you go up a level to like the big autos and stuff mm. they're always like oh order two or three shirts more than you need because of misprints but i'm like i can't i can't justify it at no. this scale and also no. the scale of what they're ordering like if it was a thousand shirts they're never going to be able to count to a thousand twice anyway so <laughs> I could, I could <laughs> you just, you just hide it in there yeah I don't know I could I could tell them that so like if it's those numbers then I'll be I, I would be so hard on myself but I'm dealing with like 50s 60s that kind of right, thing so yeah, yeah. I can't really get away with it anyway if I wanted to yeah yeah no mm -hmm. I agree no, I'm the same yeah same situation just one of them I haven't got it? one of those spray guns either everyone else seems to have a spray gun a spray out thing a oh, uh, spot gun yeah, I haven't got a spot gun. I just another hack, spot gun. I mean, it makes me sound like I mess up a lot. I really don't, but yeah, spot gun, lifesaver, absolute mm. lifesaver. Especially with plastic soul. If you print anything mm. with red plastic soul, you're gonna get it all over your hands. It goes yeah. everywhere. Yeah. Um. Yeah, spot gun. Good. I just yeah, find whenever I don't. Okay, is this is this me being silly? So it's a is a quite harsh. I've got the te textile chemical down there. But if that was mm. left on a shirt, wouldn't it? Just very slowly chemical burn someone. So what we do is, I don't really know. The, well, I don't really no, know they put it on and then they've got like a cold patch on their yeah, skin. Yeah, yeah, got like a hole. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, no. So we uh, spot gun them and then just throw them through the dryer. Just get them dry straight away. You can't see anything. When anything mm. goes from folding a bag and you'll never find that shirt. If, mm. if, if I go like find the shirt with spot gun, you'll never ever find it. Does it um, smell? No. 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 I mean, no. We're. I mean, we're literally spot gunning. We're not. Yeah, I know. Massive, great, like yeah. pull back pieces. Like take uh, all the peas off that or the teas. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No. If there's anything that wrong, we're redoing. Um, yeah. But no. Yeah. For little tiny like spots, like spot gun. Yeah, definitely the one. Definitely. But no, we've had no issues with it. Decoloring shirts and things like that. So. Mm, okay awesome um well you're in the podcast club now so you will we go. accidentally get inundated with all the other podcast people because they're, yeah. like, they're all like busy mates now they all like go I, to... I, ch I chat to a, i chat to a few of them already anyway it's great yeah. it's one thing i do like about it is like the community and the dms like my dms is now more full up of other screen printers yeah i love it it's perfect no yeah it's um, really it's really it's... good having that that like peer yeah. group where we don't all feel like we're on the on our own and it doesn't look yeah. like everyone else is like just sailing through everything with no shit falling on them we're all just yeah literally we're yeah. all suffering the yeah. same so. it's like um pav who you had on here from from dog horse yeah like yeah me and him like i share with him like all the failures yeah. i'm like look mate just mess this one up and like a client reprint job of bloody bloody fly yes it's a great laugh and it's good to have a laugh yeah. um and he's he's a good guy as well yeah you chat to him have a laugh and then sort of like forget about it and then, then yeah. your jobs jobs not so bad is it so. i know he he made a big cameo in my youtube video that i put out today and he was oh yeah he was on his hands and knees like um worshiping dave roper like <laughs> In the middle of print where I'm like, oh, for yeah. fuck's sake. That's I know cool. that is yeah. what you do. Like, that is that is what you yeah, That's yeah. like him, but it is funny. He'll be listening to this yeah. as well. The, oh, I think yeah, what he's doing yeah. is just trying to get himself mentioned on every podcast episode. Yeah, probably. Well, it's worked this time. I know. Saying that, though, he did. Uh, I do owe him a shot. Uh, I owe him a lot. I owe him a shop shirt and I owe him some beers and I'm slacking because when yeah. I got my press installed, he sent me some beers um so yeah i still owe him beers and i owe him a t-shirt so yeah. that's that i need to i need to talk myself out and, and get him get him hooked up but, yeah i'm gonna do special podcast shirts because i was just giving doing like blind maggot ones but 
it's mm. hard to see if like what people would want so i'm just going to do a generic one and so how is how is like blind maggot going like being real quick because i know you want to wrap this up but like because no, i no. see you're doing like markets and things like that now yes. i've been sort of a festival thing i heard you chatting about going to the festivals and taking well, the brand there is that what you're doing i'd like to know what your idea about that is because mm. blind maggot is not really we're not like trying to build a brand <laughs> right what yeah. we're doing is we're making images that we want to print and they are almost always the focus of a youtube video or a tutorial video or a skillshare or something yeah. Yeah. we're also like using that to like test new inks um make artwork that we want to print and then that's why we do relatively small editions of like 20 uh, being like 50 yeah most of them are yeah. 50 um, and then when we produce the shirts, we're putting them into like shops and then uh, we, we've got a market store. So we do that once a month. We just enjoy doing that. And then yeah. we, we thought a way to do this kind of like blitzing the selling would be to go to some festivals. But we've only got into like one out of 20 that we've um, applied to at the moment. But what is, what is the experience with the festival situation? Um, so we went to a lot of car shows and things like oh, okay. that, and a mm. lot of them we did do NAS, um, we never done board masters, so we've done a few of them. Mm. Um, they're a lot of money, they're a lot of money to so take a lot of stock. Like, we done Festival of Speed and stuff like that. That was like a week out of my life, um, that was a long time. So, yeah, take a lot of stock and, and be prepared, I suppose. Mm. Um, branding wise, I can't comment what ones are like the good ones to go to. Mm. Um, but it's, I, d I don't know. So, literally, two days ago, we had a, a big um, exhibition trailer that folded out and had a shop built inside of it. So, we just mm. rolled up with basically a mobile store. I literally sold that yesterday. So that whole side of like what we were doing is completely like that's a chapter closed now. Mm -hmm. So we don't do it anymore. Since the whole lockdown thing, I haven't obviously been out on the road. Yeah. But before that, we were doing 20, 30 events a year. If you want to build a brand, sales um, fast, then yeah, it's definitely the way to go. 100 mm. percent and then off the back of that we used to take for the last year that i was doing it i had i used to take a press with me a little riley 250 thing single yeah. station that's what take I'm that not. and prom yeah and promote the live screen printing and that boosted squeeze orange as well so we were sort of getting like a two for one deal with these shows we were doing a little bit of so uh live screen printing mm. on the edge of the atw um setup and that worked really well so it depends where you want to take it. Let's say if you want to take it sort of mainstream sell out, I suppose is the word. You know what I mean? You want to make it there. Um, mm. You can do at festivals quite quickly. Like your name can, can, can grow very quickly. Yeah. Ours did. You know, we started off with zero to like 50, 50 K followers. This was like way back when Instagram would start, you know, hundred K on mm. Facebook and we were building it up to I think like a million unique visitors a year just on the website um, mm. so it does work it mm. really does work so yeah it depends if you want to go to the big festivals sort of be be prepared I suppose is the only advice I can give you because you could rock up there and sell out on day one which we've sort of been known to do then you're standing around which is always a bad thing but you're sort of left there for the remainder of the two days i think that would be a good problem so, to have selling out of it is a it is stock. a good problem to have yeah um but yeah like you say it also you, it, you can always clear it's a good place what we used to do as well with with atw when we started bringing in mass stuff we sort of had a warehouse like you know racked out full of stuff any end of line stuff we never used to do sales online mm. so we used to hold the value you know we used to try and keep the value of the stock never do any sales never fell yeah. into the trap of black friday or anything like that mm -hmm. 
But what we did used to do to, to shift that stock or the end of line stuff was take it to the festivals. And then you could put it on a reduced rail slightly cheaper. And that was the only place you would get a sale item from us. Yeah. So it kept it also, we used it as a way of keeping our warehouse clear. So it was like a win-win for us, yeah, basically. Clever. We were shifting, mm-hmm. shifting through all the dead sizes that wouldn't go, um, the smalls and the triple XLs and things like that, that all get left on your on, on your online store and turning mm. it back into the cash to then back into the business. Mm. Um, so yeah, or if you want to stay niche, want to stay small in sort of like where you are, like in your niche, stay at the market, stay at just, you know, stay there, do what you're doing, because it's clearly yeah. working. It's just, it's just how big you want to take it, really, because you can yeah. end up taking a 12-metre pitch, you're turning up with three van loads of clothes, four guys working for you, da da da, you know, and it, it sort of scales out of proportion. You stand there going, like, Christ, what have I done? Yeah. Um, which is sort of what happened to us. <laughs> you know, what happened to us? We were going on the thing of, like, for a second mobile store, can we do two a month? And it was becoming, like, a whole... Itself. Monster. Like right, running, <laughs> yeah, running the live events that we were doing was becoming a whole job itself. And you could make it like your sole career is just bouncing around at festivals and events. That could mm. that could be your thing. You come back, yeah. print during the week, festival and event at the weekend. Like lifestyle was good when I was younger, not not so much anymore. I want to be home at weekends mm. now. Okay. You know, so yeah, I think yeah, we do want to be, be a bit more nomadic. So maybe it's not a bad idea i think i think gearing up to one festival then chilling back out into the studio doing some of that and just like dipping in and out is kind of where we want to be i think um we'll soon find the ones to go to you know if you can pick two or three that you can get a year good festival that you go to the Mm. key to it is like anything it will never work 100 percent the first time go back the second year you then get the people that remember you from the first year it doubles, yeah. it doubles, it doubles, it doubles, it doubles, it doubles, and it just keeps rolling until you're you're turning up to an event. There's your pitch. Everyone knows you're there. You've been doing it for five, six years, and you've mm. almost got people like, "When are you open? I need your t-shirt." When yeah. and that's that's what yeah. it gets to, yeah. um, and it gets crazy. Is it that on a super super micro level is what we've got on the high street because we're doubling our like we're only going there once a month for the Sunday, yeah. and like on our first thing we're like is this worth it and then it's doubled every single week so it's yeah maybe that is where we want to be yeah yeah who knows yeah that's it just just be prepared for the for the absolute mob that is is a festival crowd because they yeah. will like it's it's almost scary i mean depending on what festival you're gonna go to but it's almost scary at some points like when acts finish and you're in the trade village and like 150,000 people are coming through and you're almost holding on to your rails of stock because like <laughs> the stampedes of people feel like it's just gonna they're just gonna yeah. take it away like it's so, it's definitely an experience this is like a really boring question for loads of other people but do you know at the front of your stand do you kind of like have a board and then they can see what they want or do no. they walk through your rails they walk through your rails no walk through rails i always got told yeah. if you want to sell more keep it on the floor and that yeah. was like my old little market stall yeah, I think it needs to be. A I got told. Experience. Yeah, yeah. So they need to. There needs to be a flow. They need to be able to come through. Um, my biggest thing was it should be for you as well because I know you're printing all good stuff and I know your prints are good. They should be able to look, like touch, feel, and be like. That's when you get them. I think when they mm-hmm. come up and they grab that, they they grab the Stanley Stella Cruiser hoodie and they're like, whoa! Like they almost yeah. double take it. That's it. The stock sells itself if you're yeah. using the right stuff. Um, you're not worried about life easy. them thieving it or anything like that because there's no point. You just got to have it as a bit of. They don't, look, I've been doing it. There used to be some traders, you know, when you're sort of on the circuit, you know, loads of other trades. There used to be traders that used to get, they used to go on and be like, oh, but, you know, 10 grand's worth of stuff robbed. And you're like, really? I've not lost anything. <laughs> so I'm sure people, I'm <laughs> sure people make it up, you know, mm. I'm sure people make it up. But generally, the people at festivals, they're quite nice you know they they're people they're human they're not they're not gonna rob you blind i don't think they are and i don't it's not like i've come back from an event and gone wow we're missing loads of stock like it's just never happened Mm, it hasn't happened to me either i just yeah so i just wanted to ask because haven't quite gone to the because they are drunk 
they're not themselves yeah. perhaps and uh yeah okay yeah it depends what times you're trading in as well we used to like trade early sort of trade 10 11 o'clock as soon as it was always it was almost like our shutdown point was when the first beer is spilled too close to the stock that you're like right that one was close here we go like that's it that's when we used to close up and that you ruined it for everyone done. yeah that's it literally yeah yeah and they come up but yeah yeah um but other than that if you're there you're, they're all there for a good time so yeah. it's they're generally quite quite pleasant you know or they just leave you alone i suppose but cool well right. hopefully we'll have our first one in a few months and then uh yeah. yeah well let me know well i'm sure i'll see it on uh yeah, we'll ask we'll ask more advice and like that little thing that yeah. just there. So yeah. Awesome. Yeah, thank definitely. you, Darren. Cool. Lovely. Okay, hope you have a nice evening. Go. And thank you very much. And you. Thank okay. you very much. Speak to you soon. Cheers. Bye. Bye bye.